Hey everyone, Rich here from High Level How To, and today we're going to take a look at automations within High Level, a really powerful and important part of the package and something it's worth knowing a bit more about. So let's dive right in. As we come into our dashboard here, we can see all of the amazing features that are in high level, conversations where we can see email threads, text threads, even Instagram messenger threads. We can see calendars and that links in with the booking system. We've got contacts for our CRM, opportunities for pipelines and other things like that, payments, marketing, for social media planner, for email campaigns, sites, for funnels and websites, blogs, all of these good things in here. But one of the things that makes High Level awesome is because all of these things are all in the same place and not in a whole load of different packages, you can have an automation engine in High Level itself that links all of these things and can make things happen. So if we click on automations here on the side. You might see campaigns and triggers. These are really legacy ways of working with high level. You will just want to focus on workflows these days and you can see here some uh, example workflows and uh, that you can have them in draft, you can have them published, you can create workflows, you don't have to set them live immediately and also folders so that you can arrange them uh, together and put workflows that are on a similar topic in the same place so you can find them. Well, let's start by creating a workflow. So we click on this button here and helpfully you will see there are some popular workflows ready and waiting for you. So if there is something here from the list that you are wanting to do, something with Facebook Messenger here, you can see the description when the message is waiting, reply, remove tags, prompt someone to do something within a certain period of time, uh, recipes here for sending review requests, all sorts of things here. Most of the time I'm starting from scratch, so you just click on start from scratch and then create new workflow up here and you get your workflow appearing so that you can begin to edit it. You'll see it'll have a draft name here, you can just simply click in here and whatever you want to type in here. The save button then goes green to indicate you need and you've got your blue dot there to say there is an, uns, an unsaved edit. So you might want to click that from time to time because there's no auto save feature and you'll see here that we've got fundamentally two key areas. We've got what triggers the workflow and we've got our action. So if we start with a trigger we click on it and there's a search box or we can scroll up and down. These are all the things that can enable us to start a, a workflow. So we can have someone booking an appointment that can start a workflow. We can have some sort of appointment status change when an appointment becomes confirmed, for example, maybe something else happens. A birthday reminder, if we've collected date of births, that's a specific thing. A change to a contact. Let's you come back to that one in a minute, but you can see different things, tags, dates, notes get added, tasks get added, customers take certain actions, replying, going through an order form, submitting a survey, clicking on a trigger link, all of these different things. Memberships, of course, High Level has a whole LMS system built in. We can trigger off of different things when people get access to an offer, when they complete a particular product within it, when people are moving in pipeline stages, uh, even video tracking down here when people have got to a certain stage of watching a video. So many different things and beyond this video to go into every single one of these. But let's say we choose the contact uh, change trigger. Now, we can type in here whatever we want and I always recommend that people do change this so that they can debug and make changes later on. If you just put leave contact changed in there, it's going to be tricky to find it. But what you can do here is you can say, well, what change are we seeing to this person here? So we're going to perhaps, you know, we can say uh, only if 
this tag exists is added or removed or different things like that. And you can stack filters on top of the, them as well. Uh, you can have a do not disturb. You know, if uh, someone has that's changed to being enabled for all channels, then what are we going to do? Uh, and you could say contact change, do not, do not disturb, added. It's just going to help you understand what this was when you come back to do it. You can have multiple triggers. So sometimes there are different ways. Maybe it's a, a tag added over here, a thing that comes in through a different channel. You can have multiple triggers. But you can also have no triggers. And this is an important thing to remember. You don't have to have a trigger. Why would you want to have a workflow with no trigger? Well, for two reasons. You can add people to workflows in the CRM. So sometimes there's no automated trigger. You're maybe doing a bulk shift, a bulk change on some users, and you just want to go down the list, select them all in some sort of a way, maybe based on a filter that you set up in the CRM. And then once they're selected, you can bulk add them into a workflow. So sometimes you might want to have no trigger for that reason, because there's nothing going to be happening here in an automated way. You're using a workflow to do a whole load of bulk things as a one-time thing on a specific group of users. Second reason you might not want to have a trigger at the top is that you can, in our actions here, actually add to workflow from another workflow. So there may be no trigger in and of itself for this workflow, but in a different workflow, people get to a certain stage and then you add them into this. Now, there's always a debate about the extent to which you create different workflows and jump people between them or put them all in one workflow with lots of branches. I think it's really a choice and it's up to you in terms of your particular use case. But two reasons then why you might not want to trigger at the top. First is because of the bulk add thing from the CRM. Second is because you're going to add them from a different workflow. But you can have triggers and you can have multiple triggers. So you could then have contact tag trigger and you could say here that the tag was added and uh, it could be the do not disturb tag. And remember, you can add a tag in here if you haven't already got it existing. And you click save down here so you could see different ways of people coming into this workflow. So what about the actions then? Well, again, far too many for us in this video to go through all of them. But you can see here they're grouped in terms of being able to send messages through different platforms, make updates to the CRM, adding, removing tags, creating opportunities. So this is updating things in the pipeline, moving things, adding things to the pipeline, adding notes. Quite often when I'm creating complex workflows, where there's a number of things happening with a user, I'll actually add a note summarizing those things just to make it really easy for a client to spot what is happening, to, to go through and see what's happening. You can change dates, remove from workflows, as we've said. You can send internal notifications. Now, this is an important thing to understand. If you look up here, there's an option to send an email. And here you can choose the from name. And by the way, wherever you see this little uh, icon here, the tag kind of icon, that means you can put in some sort of a field. So, you know, we could just put in the, the user's full name in here. We don't, it can change depending on who uh, the client, the end user is assigned to. You can put in email, subject lines. You can have templates of these things as well. So you can write your email down below here and... Uh, you know, completely fill it out here with merge fields and, and all of those kinds of things. But you could also have a template if you want something that is visually more appealing or you might use in different places. But this is going to be sent to, if you look down here, there's no to uh, box anywhere because the email is always going to be sent to the particular user the end user who is coming through this workflow. So we don't get to choose who it gets sent to. It's whoever it is 
because it'll always be a user that is coming down through this workflow. But what if we want to message our team about something? Well, that's where the notification comes in to send an internal notification. And we've actually got different types, SMS uh, or email, or we can just do a notification. That's where it just pops out a little thing in the browser. But if we choose the email, we've got similar things here, but now we've got the choice about who we're going to send it to. Are we going to send it to all of the users? These are all of our team, the assigned user, even to custom emails or particular users. We can select those things here and choose those things. And then similar thing, we can then say here, hi, and we would be addressing it to the user rather than the contact. And we could say there is a new D and D for, and then we would put in here the clients, uh, uh, the actual end username versus the team members name. So the contact versus the username. Other actions that we might want to look at in here, adding tasks. And again, we can add tasks for, for different users. For a different clients, we can add offers around the LMS. And then these things here, really important for us to get into advanced kind of things. We can add uh, wait statements. So we might want to delay to give someone a chance to respond and then send another follow up email, wait, and we can choose different lengths of time there. But perhaps one of the most important things in the midst of this is the if else. And this isn't just a simple yes or no. And if you've done a lot of these automations in other places before, you'll know if it's a simple yes or no, you end up with nested statements where is it this? No. Is it this? No. Here you can have multiple branches. So here we can uh, look at various things and we can say, uh, is the city London? And then we can add another branch and say, is the, and we scroll down on here, is the city Manchester? And so if we save this now, you'll see we get multiple branches. And again, I think it is always good to annotate well. So here we would put which city and here we would put London. Manchester, and so what you can see is that's much easier to understand when you're trying to debug something, change something a few months down the line, or even just when you're designing. And then you can have numerous things that you want to, to do in here, adding tags, doing different things like that. But you can also have a go-to operation. So let's say there are some different things here. We're going to Maybe we're going to change a field. So we're going to update a contact field here. And there's a, a, a different field that we that we want to update in something. We, we make some change in here. And so that will be different for the use cases. But then everybody needs to get an email. Now, obviously, we could put the email before the branch. So let's say you want to add a note of uh, this city thing here in our fictional example. So we would put add to notes and then here maybe user has changed city to and we could put that city in here and maybe there is a, a different note, you know, to assign to a particular person or something because it's in in London. And we save that action, but over here, because it's in Manchester, the note is different because we've got a different office there and we have a different note that we want to add for, for people in Manchester, for example. But then we want to do something that is in common with uh, all of these uh, options. And that is we want to add a tag. And so we would uh, add the contact tag here. And we would say city added tag, perhaps. And we click save here. Now, what we can do is we can here add a go to action. 
So we click save on that and you'll see here we can choose where we're going to go to. So we click that green dot and then likewise here for this one we add a go to action. You just click save on that, that gives you the option. And then you'll see they'll all come back up to here and then even if there's none, the tag gets added but everyone gets the tag. So you can use the branches, the go-to features to do all sorts of things, testing on different conditions, taking different actions, and then joining back together, moving to different things with this go-to action. Before we finish, let's just take a quick look at some of the settings so that we can see what's also available here under workflows. We have the ability to set specific time windows, so perhaps we don't want it to look like we have our agents messaging at three o'clock in the morning. We can restrict that so it only happens during certain hours. We've got an important setting here, which is allow multiple. Sometimes in our workflows, once someone has gone through, there's some sort of an action. We don't want that happening again. And the default is that you can't go through a second time but often with our workflows we do want it to happen every time a user does that we want this to happen and so important to figure out and get that ticked stop on response is also really useful we might have a chase sequence that we want to go through and we can simply tick this uh, item on and then when we actually get a response back it stops chasing in some sort of a way and you can see here we can mark conversations as read in the midst of that and even start this workflow at a certain time but there's a different way of doing that now with the event start action back on the main page history would show us all the ways in which this has been triggered really useful for understanding if uh, there have been issues or if people got questions with a particular client going through that and status likewise Particularly when you've got wait steps, when you've got people who are taking time to go through a workflow, figuring out where people are up to in this. And you can also see that, by the way, if there is a wait step, you, you'll get a little person uh, showing you the place that they are at in the workflow, which is really helpful, again, in terms of debugging and figuring out where things go. Final thing then to say, when you're ready for your workflow to actually be live important to click on publish and you do need to click on save again and now your workflow is live and uh, people will start triggering down so so many features in workflows and automations lots to look at but hopefully that's given you an idea of what is possible and the kinds of things that you can do with workflows in high level if you haven't yet signed up to High Level and you'd like a free trial for it, then click the link down below. Head to ghltrial.com. That's going to give you 14 days free trial and you can jump into this and click around just as I've been doing today and look and see what the features are and if this is something that's going to be useful for you.